Hey everybody, it's Dr. Matt here. Uh, what I wanted to do today is I want to make this video on bevel setting razors. I've, I've had this in my head for a while and it's not just how to do it. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do it, but this is going to be if and how do you know and a lot of things that, uh, uh, that we're going to cover. And what they are, they're going to be five essential things that you have to know before setting that, that bevel on the razor or attempting to set it, okay? Five things are, number one, what is the bevel? Some people have different ideas of it. Number two, what does setting the bevel really mean? I mean, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? Or what is it you're trying to accomplish when you do it? What's the goal, all right? Number three, how do you know if the bevel needs to be set? Fair question. All right, number four, how to do it. That's really the simplest part. But number five, and really a hugely important part, is how do you know when the bevel's been set? That's a really, really important question. How do you know that you've reached your endpoint? Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you three tests, three objective tests that you'll be able to tell absolutely beyond the shadow of a doubt if your bevel's set yes or no, and it's going to take you about 10 seconds to do those to do those three tests, okay? So that's going to be quite a bit to cover. It's going to take some time here. So buckle up. All right. Number one, what is the bevel? Well, some people think that the bevel is this part here, all right? Just the end there, just the end that, gets, that you shave with. That's not the bevel. That's only part of the bevel. The entire bevel goes from the edge all the way to the spine. It's this entire plane here, this entire flat surface. I already show you on my, on my big model here, all right? Edge, spine, this whole plane, this whole thing is the bevel. Now, granted that most of it on hollow ground razors, it's ground out that plane. It's not there, but it's still the whole entire plane is what the bevel is, okay? All right, next. What what does setting the bevel mean? I mean, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that plane flat, all right? We get that plane flat, and then we get this plane absolutely flat, and those planes come together like this, and they form a point. But it's not just a point. This is a three-dimensional shape, this triangular shape, and that shape is called a... You know what that is? I didn't know what it was either. I had to ask my son. He's like, duh, triangular prism, dad. Triangular prism or the box of Toblerone, okay? So that's what setting the bevel is right there. That's a set bevel, boom. Forms a point and that point forms a line and that line is your shaving edge, okay? So that's what we're attempting to do when we set the bevel, all right? Just so you know, setting the bevel is a one-shot deal, all right? You know, it only has to be done once on a razor. So chances are, if you have an older razor, vintage razor, it's been around for a while, bevel's been set on it. So, um, you know, it may just need some, uh, some, some touch-up honing or whatever if it, doesn't, if it doesn't shave well. All right. Number three. This is a big one. How do you know if the bevel needs to be set? Like I said, it's a one-shot deal. Chances are it probably doesn't need to be set, but how do you know? Well, this is the thing that really motivated me to make this video because this is something that I stumbled upon, and it was years after I got into this, and I thought, wow, this is huge. But anyway, I was reading on one of the forums, and Slash McCoy was talking to somebody, and he told this person, he said, look, if you want to check and see if the razor's flat, what you need to do is you put it on a, on a flat surface, and he says, and touch the corners of the razor to see if it's flat. Well, I read this, went in one ear, out the other. I didn't think much of it because to me it sounded so basic. Like, you know, why would you even, you know, take, take note of that? And so I, I, I kept going. Now, fast forward a few years, and I have this razor, a weight and butcher that I got, and I tried honing it. To get it to shave and it just wouldn't shave well. I don't, I, I tried everything I could for weeks. I tried this edge, that edge, every, everything that I, everything that I could throw at it. 
It just wouldn't shave that well, and I love old Sheffields because they shave so wonderfully. Anyway, what I did is I took the razor and I put it in the drawer, and I put it in the drawer with all of the other razors that over the years that I just really couldn't get to come around. But this razor bothered me, all right? This is the one that kept me up at night. So one day, I'm at my, my uh, shave sink, and I open up the drawer, and I pull the razor out, and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it trying to figure this thing out. And for some reason, what I did is I took and I put it on my granite countertop around the sink, and I let the, the shank hang off of the edge and the, and the scales, and I put it on there, and I tapped the corners. And it went clink, 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 clink. And I just, it, it, was, like a, it was like a, like a bomb went off in my head. I mean, to say that a light went off wasn't even, it wasn't even close to as far as, you know, what I felt. I was like, oh my God, what is this? You know, I, I realized the gravity of what it is that I discovered and as to, to why this thing wasn't coming around. So right away, boom, I tear open the drawer of all those other razors that I couldn't get to shave. And I take and I put them on the granite and I tap them and I, 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 I check them to see if they're flat. Every single one, miserably, fails the test, okay? So then I thought, well, let me get my razors that shave really well. I pulled those out of the out of the cup and I checked them. Every one of them dead flat. So I realized that, you know, what I've been missing all of this time to check and see if that razor is flat. And this is a real simple test and it's what I affectionately call the tap and wobble test, all right? Here it is. Okay, here it is. What we want to do is you just put the put the razor on the flat surface. I have a piece of granite here. I got it from Home Depot. <clears throat> and put it on the flat surface, and all you want to do is tap the corners. You'll notice that it's usually opposite corners. In this particular case, it's this corner and this end. You tap it the other side, it's pretty solid. But you can see this is definitely a positive tap and wobble. But also what you want to try and do is take and slide the stabilizer off to see if this one still still wobbles. Not as much, but if you slide it off the stabilizer and then it doesn't wobble anymore, obviously you know where your problem is. But here you can see even with the stabilizer off, it wobbles, okay? We can see the high spot is right here and right there, these opposite corners, okay? Now just to show you what a flat razor will look like, here's one of the stabilizers been ground off this thing is rock solid, nothing. I can slide this thing all the way on, all the way off. There's absolutely no movement here. So that is the tap and wobble. Here it is again. See, that side's pretty tight. And I'm going to flip it over. All right, come on over here. Okay, how did you like that? It's a very simple test. In fact, this is an embarrassingly simple test. But there's a lot of people that don't do it. <laughs> and I know that because people will send me razors and they say, look, you know, this thing just won't shave well. I've, I've, I've had it, I've, I've tried to hone it, I've done this, I've done that, I've sent it to this person, that person just doesn't shave well. Um, uh, one guy sends me a razor. He bought two Dovo razors from a gentleman that, he, that had honed them. One of them worked, one of them didn't. He sends them to me and he says, you know, can you, can you take a look at these? One of them shaves good and the other one doesn't. He said, when I got the, the one that didn't work, he says, I called the guy that I got it from and I told him I sent it back. He rehoned it. And when I got it back the second time, no difference. Doesn't shave arm hair. So he sends me the razors. The first thing that I do is I take them, I put them on the piece of glass that I have in my office. Right away, I could tell one of them rock solid. The other one, tink, 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 miserably failed the tap and wobble test. So I email them right away and I say, look, here's the problem with the razor. It's warped. I said, I can fix it, but it'll probably have some homeware. And uh, just so you know. And right away, he responds and he says, look, do whatever you got to do. He says, I really appreciate you finding the problem. He says, I was ready to give up on the razor. He says, it really stressed me out. And then he said to me, he said, you know, 
I really wish I knew what was going on inside your head. And I thought, oh boy, you know, I mean, I took the compliment. He thought that I was like some, some mad scientist that figured this thing out. I mean, it's such a simple test. I mean, this test is so simple. It's equivalent to checking the gas tank in your car or your lawnmower if it doesn't start. You know, that simple. Uh-huh, I reckon out of gas. Yep, that simple. So uh, that's the, the test to determine if, that, uh, if the bevel needs to be set. Uh, all right, next thing, point number four, there was, what's the bevel, setting the bevel, how do you know if it needs to be set, point number four, all right, this is how do you do it, all right, how do you actually set the bevel, and, and this is, like I started out saying, this is the easiest part, I mean, what you do is you just take that, that razor and you rub it on your stone until the the high spots or whatever it is that's causing the wobble are gone and that thing sets flat on the surface. Um, but a couple things I wanted to add here. What I like to do is I, when I look at the wobble, I'll try and study the wobble and see where those high spots are. Sometimes if you can, you know, you see how it wobbles and you find them, I mark them with a Sharpie marker and then I'll, you know, work that on the stone and, and, and get them down that way. Um, also, if the wobble is bad enough or bad, what I do is I like to do that, do this, uh, the bevel setting on a diamond plate. A couple of reasons. Number one, it's more efficient, but probably more importantly is that the diamond plate doesn't wear out as you, you know, as you work it. A normal whetstone, the, the, the particles start to, the stone will start to dish as you wear. I mean, that's just the property and how that thing works. So if you're using, say, a Chosera 1K to set the bevel, which is what I use, um, I would suggest that you lap that stone once or twice in between the process, depending upon how long it takes. But I like to use the diamond plate. If it's real bad, I, I'll use a 400. Uh, recently, I have an Atoma 1200, which is wonderful. Those things really great. If you use 400, the 1200 gets a lot of those 400 scratches. And then I go to the Chosera, which works fantastic. Uh, all of those diamond scratches are gone, and, and, and it's, it's pretty quick to do. Um, all right, the next thing regarding how to set the bevel, when you're doing this, do not use tape. You can't use tape when you're setting the bevel if that bevel's crooked, okay? If that bevel, if that razor is warped like this, all right, there's a twist to that thing. Does one of these numbers, okay? If you were to take tape, and put it over the spine. Remember we said that the bevel is from the edge to the spine. Now, if you were to take tape and cover this spine this way, what you've done is you've effectively eliminated the correction of the spine from the formula. There will be no correction on that spine. And honestly, when there is a warp to it, a lot of the metal in the high spots is usually on the spine, okay? So if we have one of these, let's just assume that my arms are gonna be the, the edges of the razor. This is the leading edge, this, we're looking at it like this. All right, we're looking at the razor this way, all right? This arm is gonna be the, the edge here. My arm back here is the spine, okay? And we can see, this is flat. If you have a warp to it, it does one of these. You have a high spot down on the spine, high spot on this front corner. As we work it on the stone, we knock down the high spots and it does this and becomes flat, okay? We're removing metal from both the spine and the edge. Now let's just say, we'll put it in numbers, let's just say you have a warp of 10 units, all right? Whatever the units are, all right? We take and we work it, we work it, we work it, it flattens out, it takes five units from the spine, it takes five units from the, from the edge, it becomes flat. All right, now let's try the scenario with tape on the spine. We take the spine, we now, we've insulated it from any correction, any metal removal. So we have this, we have tape back here on the spine. Now the spine sets like this. It sets on the hone this way. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna grind the shit out of that front corner. You're gonna remove all 10 units of the correction out of that front corner and the spine gets none of it, okay? So now you took you the front edge of the razor and you matched it, became coplanar parallel to a spine that's crooked, 
Okay, so then we take and we flip it over and we do the same thing over there. So now we have a scenario of where, if you've ever been in, uh, where you see the, the car or the truck driving down the road sideways like this, if you've ever been behind one of these, it does one of these numbers, the frame is bent, but the mechanic took and, and, and tweaked the front end so it would drive straight. I mean, when you put tape on the spine, uh, um, you, you, you can't make the correction there. It's like going to the mechanic with the front end bent out of shape and you say to the mechanic, say, look, what I'd like is for you to align the front end, but you can only touch or adjust the front left tire. And the mechanic says, well, the right and the left are bent though. And you say, I know, but you can only adjust the left. And the truth is he can probably overcompensate or over adjust the left to make that car go straight, but it's still not right, okay? Um, now, some people say, look, I, I don't want to, you know, put, I want to put tape. I don't want any wear on there because it's just not pretty. Let me keep it in perspective, fellas. This is pretty. And this is ridiculously pretty. And this, well, this is a tool, okay? But I mean, I can I can respect people that don't want to put hone wear on their razor, but just understand what it is that you're doing. If there is a warp, if you have a positive tap and wobble, you put tape on there, it's never going to really be corrected. Now it can still shave. I had someone send me a razor last week that was over 100 years old, and I told them that it had a slight warp and that it would need you know some work on it. Might have some hone wear. And he said, look, he says I've honed it before with tape, and he says it comes out real well. And he says I prefer not to have any of the wear, and I can respect that. Okay, I can respect that. Um, like I said earlier, this is not a, a tape versus no tape argument. If you want to use tape, you can just understand, you know, when you should use it and, and what the consequences or lack thereof if you do decide to or not to use it. Okay. Um, also, understand that when you use tape, for every layer of tape you put on the on the spine of the razor, you are sacrificing one to one and a half degree of bevel angle, okay? Now, some people would put tape on the spine to circumvent the whole warpage. They can take and jack that, that, that spine up to get that edge to touch, but they're circumventing or working around the problem. Not only are they working around the problem or they're getting the car to go do one of these numbers, but you're also making that bevel wider. And, you know, you say you have a, a bevel angle of 18 degrees, which is usually the upper end of decent shaving, you put two layers of tape, now you're over 20, you're 20, 21 degrees, it takes you out of the range of a, of a comfortable shave there, okay? So you, keep that in mind as well as, as, as you're doing that. Okay, number five, the last point here, and that is, how do you know when you've reached your goal? How do you know you've reached the end point? How do you know that the bevel's set? I know there's a lot of things people do out there and, and tests and, and, and things like that. Um, but number one, the number one thing that you do, the test that you know, first off, tap and wobble. Is the tap and wobble negative? You put it on a flat surface and that thing's flat, you're 80 to 90% of the way there, okay? So that is a test that I call a structural test, all right? That's one test. We're gonna cover three of these, all right? Test number one, structural test, tap and wobble. Is it set? Is the, is the, are the planes even and does it come to a point? All right. Number two, how do you know if your bevel set? It's a visual test. When you're honing, when you're honing that razor, check to make sure that the hone is hitting all the way across the edge and all the way across the spine. Remember, that, that whole plane is the bevel, so you want to make sure that your entire spine is hitting this, the stone as well. You know, if I, I have a, uh, like a halogen light up above me when I, I hone, and I can, you know, look at it, and it reflects real well off the edge. Uh, you know, you can also use a microscope, too. I'll use that if, I'm, if it's really, you know, close or, or, or if I'm having kind of an issue with it. But really, just a visual check. It is real good, okay? So that's what you do while you're honing. All right, test number three. This is a functional test, okay? A functional test. There are a lot of functional tests out there that people do. Probably the most popular one is the thumb pad test, where you take the, the thumb when you're setting the bevel and you, 
you know, you, I guess you wiggle it back and forth and you, you, you get a certain feel on your thumb. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what to feel for on that test. That test is a purely 100% subjective test. It's up to the interpretation of the person doing the test as far as what the result is. For many years, I did a test where I would check the arm hair. I would just, you know, take the razor, touch the arm hair, if it would cut arm hair. And also I could tell by the way it would grab, by the way it would grab the skin and the hair. And that was a good test for me as well. But I have to tell you this. I stumbled across something in the last month that I consider to be the Mac Daddy of all objective tests for determining if your razor is sharp, if the bevel's set, okay? And that test is this. What the hell is that, Doc? It looks like a tomato. It is. It's a cherry tomato. You take the razor and you check to see if it will cut the skin. I stole this test. I stole this test bad. I got this test from Doc226. I saw it on his videos and I thought, hmm, that looks interesting. But I can tell you, this test is 100% objective. Either it works or it doesn't. It doesn't really matter what it is you think or feel about the test. It's going to work. And it works something like this. This is what it looks like. Let's see if you can see this here. You take it at about a 45 degree angle, and what you want to do is you want to test it all along the edge, all the different parts. And you should be able to just barely blow on that razor till it cuts the skin. Okay? The back, the middle. You don't want to do one swipe all the way across because that won't test all the different parts of the edge. Just do it along like that. This is a phenomenal test. Like I said, 100% objective. Either it does or it doesn't. So that's a, that's a great test. So those are the three tests that you can determine if your bevel's been set. Okay, so... What we covered, number one, we covered the five points. What is the bevel? It's the whole thing, right? What does setting the bevel mean? We're trying to create this, just geometric shape, the box of Toblerone, right? Number three, how do you know the bevel needs to be set? Tap and wobble, tap and wobble, tap and wobble. That test trumps all of the other tests. Um, because remember, when I, when I started out and I said that I couldn't get that razor to shave, I can guarantee you that that razor, visually, when I checked it along, I used my scope, I was out to the edge all of the way. Uh, it slayed a hanging hair test, that functional test. Um, but it just wouldn't shave because the tap and wobble was off, okay? Um, number four, how do you actually set the bevel? Well. That's the easy part. Use stones. I prefer the diamond plate. Um, not using tape. If you really want to properly set the bevel, you don't use tape on it, okay? Because you have to remove metal from both the spine and the edge, all right? And number five, finally, how do you know that it's set? Those three tests. Structural test, tap and wobble. Visual test, looking at it on the edge, or you can use your microscope. And the third test is your functional test Objective, 100% cherry tomato. Great test. All right, so hopefully you guys got all of that. Um, give it a try. Leave some comments. Let me know how it works for you. If you have any, have any questions to ask me personally, email me, drmatt357 at hotmail.com. Uh, oh, one other thing that I wanted to say, and I mentioned in my previous video, and that is I now have my very own page on the Chef Knives to Go website with all of the razor stuff that I use. The stuff that I talked about in the video here, the Chosera, the Atoma plates, the, the microscope, if you're into the sprays, all of that stuff is there on the, uh, on the webpage. Um, Mark Richmond, who owns Chef Knives to Go, he set it up because he wanted you guys to have a, a one-stop shop. All of the stuff that, if, if you're into the videos and stuff that I do, that you can get it there. It's not like I get a cut of it, guys. He's just doing this, so it'll be convenient for you, all right? So if you have any questions, like I said, let me know. Hope you enjoyed this. 
Have a great day.